It's called the Bug de Rogers Traverse. We're actually doing it in reverse because of the weather. That way, really sketchy. This way is only a little bit sketchy. I see the cash! That looks pretty interesting. First, we get to go ski down. Ski? Hey, Tobin. Hey. Cody said we're gonna go skiing. <laughs> no, no, we're on a traverse. Still feels slow this morning. <laughs> I slept really well last night. Yeah, it probably helps to do two 20K days in a row. Day five yesterday, so day six today. Morning. Buongiorno. Or, as I like to say, buenos dias. Weirdly, every night has gotten colder. This whole trip we planned from a north to south perspective because it was supposed to get much warmer, a huge warming trend. But as we've gotten into the Purcells, we've entered a whole different world. The snowpack feels entirely different. I'm sure it'll warm up pretty well, but wow, what a place we are in. With the sun up and on us, it is still incredibly cold. And also really dreading putting these damn things on. They are. Welcome to life, uh, B-grade pro skier like this guy. Yeah. Ironically, I was like a highly paid A-grade skier <laughs> staying at five-star lodges, and I was like, you know what? I want to go put on frozen boots in the backcountry after traversing for six days. That seems like more of the ticket. But don't let us discourage you from doing a traverse. Yeah. Because it's good times out here. What are we here? Day six? And we're gonna head up over that pass. And then whoosh, aim for 20 kilometers. Hopefully aim for a cache. Day six, Raj to Bugs. We have been coming from that basin over here. And they're going up this up over there. So big punch to start the day. And I'd say the theme so far on this whole thing is everything takes a little bit longer than you expect. And everything's a little bit more technical or challenging. First sight of the bugaboos. Oh! They're still really far away. It's so hot. It's hot as hell. But check it out. Is that the pass? That's the bugaboos. Oh, in the far distance. Yeah. I was wondering. All right. The goal is that coal. I'm gonna cut hard right. Try not to abuse any altitude. Third huge day in a row. Another 1500 vert, two miles. Definitely all adding up now. Feeling it. Oh, wow. Oh, is that it? Yeah, that's it. We gotta go over this one, then over the next one, and then our cache. One more pass, at least, today. We're all pretty smoked at this point. Running low on fuel. Sorta of ish on food, but fuel, that's the main issue. All right, 4.30, time to go find our camp spot. We've done a pretty big day. Well, four and a half thousand feet, maybe 15 miles. Go find it, and then tomorrow, maybe another big day. Just the theme of this, Just big day after big day. We got day seven, 
At eight in the morning, each day gets a little slower to get out of camp, but got a couple cruxes ahead of us. It feels like we're on the home stretch, but I think that mentally will destroy you if we think we're on the home stretch because we got a big day today. We're gonna get to the cache. Yeah, Bjarne got his food stolen last night, so we literally, he has no food, and we had to pile some little extras we have. So if we get there and we have no food, we are like game over. Biggest vertical pass, right? Between us and our food. I think it is. 800 meters. 800 meters. We have an 800 meter climb and then a big contour to our, and a little bit up to our cache. And then we're trying to get up onto the Conrad ice cap, which is another 600 meters up. So we got a big day. Should we do it? Yeah, let's do it. This side we came from, and now this side we go. Cash right back there up onto that glacier. for cash number two. I'm legit so nervous right now. I've had so many encounters with woodland creatures trying to steal our food. It just seems likely that something's happened. Or it's in my brain, I don't know. The fatigue, just over this roll. <sighs> See the cash, some animal tracks. Looks fucking good! Not a damn thing. Woo! We got food! Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We got food! Nice work, team. Yeah, good work, team. Holy hell. <sighs> okay, well, we have properly gotten rid of the cache, loaded up with our food, loaded it up with fuel, and now we got another about 1,500, 1,700 vert to get to the top of the glacier, which is our goal for tonight. And then we got a long 20K flat walk out tomorrow.
good morning from camp. What is most likely, or what could be, our last day on this traverse. Which is a really good thing, because the sleeping bag is completely soaked and now frozen. Everything is covered in snow and wet. It is just cold in general. But now, we got these beautiful views. That's amazing. It is absolutely oppressively hot out here today, which is exactly the reason why we did it north to south. Because we figured that we were in a lot bigger mountains and this warm up that was predicted came to be far more dangerous. We still have hazards to deal with today, far less. Dropping into this witch's cauldron under all these Suraks and then up there and then up around in the BCS pass up that way. I don't know if you can see Tobin down there, tiny little guy. But yeah, relentless. Oh wow. It's really hot, so we had to push it. This last steep pitch up to the glacier because it's hot. The heat, temperature, rice, the mountains, it's fucking dangerous. Oh. What a day. We just came from those peaks up there. It was freezing and snowing. And we just got into this witch's cauldron. And it's so hot and really gnarly. Like, really scary place to be right now. Ah, you know, uh, when you're cranking like 2,000 bird an hour at the end of a nine day trip for the 50 pound pack? You're running on adrenaline. Yeah, it got hot down there, man. Holy smoking hot. That was scary. Oh, so wet. I'm so hot right now. It's what? <laughs> you just was like, go down a couple of degrees here. I thought we were all puppy dogs and rainbows <laughs> today. <laughs> I was like, I mean, the whole map, it's like, oh, you're just contouring. You never really drop elevation. And yeah, but it's like, oh, this will be the easiest day of the trip. We went into the abyss today. That was possible. That was the most scared I've been. Oh, for sure. By was. far the most scared I've been. This is why we do this. I push ourselves. Because there's very few experiences going out here. The days on end. Feeling the power of the mountains. The top of the final hill. BCS coal. What a hard push. Today. The day before that. The day before that. The day before that. I don't know why, but it always ends up being worth it. Let's get up to this view. Holy hell. Oh, oh, oh! 
This place is rad. I'm really happy this is our finish line. It's like a place I've seen and you see all these amazing photos of, but like it is powerful. Yeah, dude, we, I mean, we still gotta get down. It's a healthy down, but I mean, ultimately like this feels like we crossed the finish, right? Cabin's the finish, but yeah. Cabin's the finish, but I feel like I'm like, all right. I mean, yeah, we do have a pretty steep gnarly down, but yeah. high five for one hell of an adventure. That was a big day. It was a big day the last six days in a row. One pin day and two days before that. So far, what do you think? I think it's uh, there's a lot more to this traverse than I think it has a reputation for. Even like, and it has a reputation for having complexities. But like, I think we were relatively lucky with weather and all sorts of stuff. And it was still a little complicated. You know, if you have yeah. a ton of snow or winds or you know any extreme and or challenging for stability or something. I just don't know how you'd get through it. It's got a reputation as like, I don't know, Bugs to Rogers Traverse. You think it's like jollying out with an old school day pack in your 60s and go do it. Like it's burly and there's a lot of challenges. What I found cool about it was like every day there was something that was almost a trip ender. Yeah. Like, and you had to figure out how to make it around that. Yeah. Whether that was a Pine Martin stealing your food, yeah. whether that was storm, out of the blue, wet slides, isothermic, freaking horrible guts, your uh, <clears throat> cash being raided to like route finding, to storms coming in, to like deciding to do it north to south because like how hot today was. I think there's so many little things like this is not an easy traverse. I'm kind of blown away at how complex it was. And then today felt like it was gonna be an easy one. And oof, that was one of the gnarliest ones yet. Traverses haven't won me over, but this was pretty damn cool. You know, I don't think I'm a traverser per se, but at the same time, I'm so glad we've had this experience. And I think any skier that, you know, has been chasing after lines or like spends a lot of time in BC or whatever like that, it's an experience not to be missed. I think it's really good. It tests your skills and you're on the edge in many different ways. It's a whole different, it's not like skiing super gnarly, death defying lines, but it has almost that flavor in the most subtle way every day. So it challenges you. So no, I'm stoked. Let's uh, let's get to that hut. That was a, that was a fun adventure, buddy. Thanks for having me out. BRNA. Trying to thank you. All right, let's wrap this thing up. Oh, it's good snow. Hard, heavy pack ripping, heavy pack ripping. Bugs are Rogers Traverse, number 40, done. I still don't know why Traverses are in a book with the word descents in the title, but it's still pretty cool. Stoked I did it.